Hello. Today we are going to run through license management when dealing with Acronis CyberProtect, both cloud-hosted and on-premise editions. License management all starts with the account.acronis.com. This is where your license keys are registered. This is also where you'll land if you start a trial with the product. As you can see, the account we're currently logged under has both trial licenses, you can see by the trial indicator and the expiration date we have here, as well as production licenses. So you are allowed to have a mix. License management, once registered, is handled through the Acronis Cloud Console. So you can simply log into that by going to Open Cloud Console here, or if you navigate to cloud.acronis.com and log in with the same account you use for account.acronis.com, it'll take you to where you can manage these keys and associate them with specific management servers or with the, the Cloud Console. So if I move to the Cloud Console, I'll come under Settings, then License Usage, from this page here, I can see you know, about license allocation here. So it'll give you some information on how to do the different allocations. I can see my cloud management server, and I can see unallocated licenses. So if I open up unallocated licenses, meaning that I have not assigned them to a management server, I can see my trials are in here. You can see they also have an upcoming expiration date, or I can see my production keys, which have an extended expiration date here. I can also see what keys are already added to the cloud management server. So if I open this up, I can see our trial keys have been put there. You can see we're zero out of zero out on the advanced workstation. So let's assume that I wanted to manage a workstation from the cloud. To associate that license with that and enable it for usage, it's as simple as clicking allocate license, coming in and choosing how many keys you would like to allocate to it, and pressing allocate. Now you can turn licenses on or off inside of here. So I can come in and say, hey, do I want to have keys associated with them? So with the trial, you'll notice we give you an unlimited count here. With allocated to server with regular production, you'll be able to choose a, the count and quantity. So I'll go ahead and select allocate here. That'll spin for just a moment, moving the key from unallocated to allocated into the cloud console. While we're working through that, the next step is let's go into offline management server registration. So in the case of having an air gap or a machine that does not have internet access, we can still run in those types of environments. You'll notice here at the top, there's a register offline management server uh, option. To start with this, what we'll do is we will go to the local management server. So in this case, I have one installed locally here. So I'm gonna go ahead and log into that. Normally when you first log in, it's actually going to prompt you to sign in. Now, if your machine can access the internet, you can sign in, the management server would show up there as an option. You'd be able to choose what keys you would like to give to it and, and be able to access that. In offline type situations, you're gonna be moving some files back and forth. So once we get into the management server here, we'll be able to, to go through and, and do that activation. Okay, and now that the management server is loaded, you'll see we'll have a couple of options here. If I was on an online machine, and in this case I am, but I'm going to show this as an offline activation, I could simply click sign in and sign into my Acronis account. In air gap type scenarios or scenarios that don't have internet access, we would choose activation through a file. So I'll go ahead and click that link. Here I have a couple of options. So I have an activation file option here, but if I don't have an activation file yet, we would have to download our registration file and follow these simple instructions here. So I'm gonna go ahead and download the registration file. We can see registration-file.bin. Now the next step would be go to go to cloud.acronis.com. So if I come back to the previous tab that I have, it's cloud.acronis.com underneath my license management, and I'll choose register offline management server. At this point, it's going to ask for that registration file. So I'll simply browse my file system for that. In this case, it's in my downloads page. There's my registration file.bin. I'll hit open on that. Activation file generated. I can come through and download that. So now in my license management page, you'll see I have the server name here and it automatically appended what keys we have. So it moved my licenses automatically to this server. There is a default behavior that licenses with your first registration will all automatically be allocated to your first management server. You can change those. Now, before you make changes on this, you'll need to come back to the, the console or to the management server, upload that activation file if I come in here, we have activation file.bin, and then I can simply hit open. Activation is now successful. I can hit continue here. Now on my management server side, if I come underneath settings and license usage here, I can actually see what keys are associated. You'll notice I have no options for allocating or unallocating. Um, that's because this 
machine has been done in an offline manner. If I look at the cloud console again, I can see that this is an offline management server. So I can come in and say, let's that generate a new activation file. Now let's say I needed to move these two workstations to a different machine, or I needed to reduce this count. Same kind of idea as we did with the cloud console. I would simply hit allocate licenses here. I would go ahead and subtract that by one. I'll hit allocate. That then prompts me to download an activation file. Now, one catch here, you do not want to close this window. So you'll want to download your activation file. You'll see we get a new activation file here. This window needs to stay open because we need to be able to upload a confirmation file. So if I go back to the console, I'll click activate through file here. I'll go upload file. I'll choose the new, you can tell that's the new one because that's the one appended to it. Go ahead and hit open there. And then I'll download that confirmation file. Same kind of idea, you don't want to close this box because you need to be able to generate this, this confirmation file. When I do download confirmation file, I now have a confirmation.bid. I go back to the other console, hit upload my confirmation file, choose my confirmation file, and that confirms with the cloud services that, hey, we have actually reduced that count. That frees up that license. So now we can see this will change to a one here shortly. And then under unallocated license, I'll have that, that license key back available that I can move as necessary. Now on the on-premise management server side, I'll be able to say, hey, we're finished here. I can close this out. I now see one. License activation. So as far as usage, usage automatically happens on a machine as you apply a protection plan to that. So for example, if I come into a device, and I'll change this view to our table view here. I can select this device. If I choose to protect this device, it'll automatically apply a protection plan to it. So I can come through and choose where do I want to back up. So in this case, I'm just going to tell it, let's go to a local folder. Um, and I'll just have it go straight to a C drive. In this case, for this example, I can pick and choose the different options that I need. Um, but as soon as I apply this, and in this case, I'm going to turn off the schedule as I don't want this plan to be running. You'll notice that when I apply this, and I'll just leave it named as new protection plan, hit apply on there. It's going to give me the prompt for bootable media. But once this plan is now applied, I can actually come in and look at the details of the device. And I can now see that it actually grabbed one of our licenses. So in this case, because it's a virtual machine, it picked up that it's going to use our virtual host license. Now, if I come underneath settings and look at license usage, I can now see I'm using one out of unlimited. If I click on that, it'll actually tell me what workloads are utilizing it and if there's an expiration date that's on it. So you don't manually need to put or apply licenses to a device. You can if you would like, but the automatic logic inside of our console allows it to automatically apply the correct license or the best license to that. Um, otherwise, if you needed to manually change it, you can select the individual device to change the license on, choose details, and then you can see here, there's my license. I have a change option here, and it'll show me what licenses are available. So I can come in and say, hey, let's change this to our server license because this is running a server operating system. You'll notice it doesn't give me the option for my workstation license. And again, that's because this is a server-based operating system. We can see here that it's server 2019 data center. If it was a workstation, say Windows 10, Mac OS, I'd be able to apply that workstation license to it. I can simply hit change there. That forces the change. If we come back to our settings now, license usage, we'll see that the one has moved into our server console. So hopefully that helps you understand how to manage your licenses, apply them to the correct management server, whether it be on-premise or whether it be our cloud-hosted management server, as well as dealing with our offline management server capabilities. If there's any questions, please reach out to your, your sales representative and have a great day.